All right. Uh, in this module, we will talk about the last of the specimen preparation techniques, uh, last of the steps, etching. As I mentioned in the intro, this is a chemical method, uh, and it gives us contrast. Uh, we've just created a scratch-free mirror surface uh, that doesn't tell us much about the microstructure. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do a chemical method, sometimes an acid, uh, to create contrast between different microstructural features. All right, so let's get into it. All right, so etching, uh, again, chemical method uh, to generate contrast. Um, and this could be between uh, grains, twin boundaries, phases, if we have multiple phases in the material, or even different orientations of crystals. So all these things are, are things that we could detect on the, the specimen surface. And etching isn't anything super complicated. Um, all it is is controlled corrosion. So we're controlling the corrosion rate such that we create contrast between different things. So corrosion happens faster in certain areas and it allows us to see one of these features. All right, so uh, contrast is gained by the electrolytic action between surface areas. And these surface areas are with different Sorry. Differences in chemical or electrochemical potentials. So basically, this is a fancy way of saying uh, they have differences in reaction rates um, that can cause differences in these corrosion, uh, which can give us contrast. So basically, some features become what we call anodic, or the anode, and others cathodic, so the cathode, for specific etching conditions. So during etching, again, I, I mentioned it's a chemical process. So we have something called the etchant. This is just some chemical that selectively dissolves. certain areas. Faster than others. So a lot of times, since these are metallic systems um, in metallography, then these are acids which can dissolve uh, metals, and they dissolve different portions of the metal at different rates, giving us this contrast that we're after. Uh, the uh, the example is ground uh, uh, grain boundaries. That's the most probably the most common uh, etchant related material that we'll deal with. Uh, so grain boundaries. So these are the boundaries between uh, corresponding grains, 
And so grain boundaries tend to etch more rapidly than grain interiors. So the so the grain interior tends to, to go uh, be more resistant to the action of the etchant than the boundary. And so what that does is that if this is our specimen and this is our specimen surface, so we're looking at it from uh, basically the light traveling down, right? So we've polished ground and polished this so it's perfectly flat. And so if we look in the microscope, it just looks like a mirror. We don't see anything. Uh, but when we expose it to the etchant, through the etching process, what that does is, let's say the grain is here. And I'll draw it over here as well. This is grain boundary. What that does is this area is more reactive. And so it will cause this groove to form. So basically the area, this grain boundary is more reactive. And so the area, or sorry, that, that area dissolves more quickly and it leaves us with this grain boundary groove. The reason this is important is because when we shine light on it and look in light microscopy, this over here, light uh, comes in uh, and bounces back and we don't see anything, right? We don't see any contrast because it's doing that for all the areas. Over here though, again, uh, light will bounce off, but here light bounces off at different directions as opposed to the other areas. And my uh, my image here is getting a little uh, mixed up. But in this area, uh, scattering tends to occur. So the light isn't scattered back in the same direction as it is here. So it tends to get scattered here. And so those areas tend to be uh, dark because the light isn't returning to the microscope. And so what we tend to see, if we're gonna look at that structure, is we see something like very roughly here right so these dark areas is the grain boundary i'm going to abbreviate gb <laughs> and then the uh light is interior right because this is flat it's etching at a consistent rate and so the light scatters uh, very normally all the light comes back and so we have a light region. Here though, it's scattered and goes in all directions, and so it doesn't return uh, to the lens, and so it appears dark. And so that's where we get the, the contrast in this grain boundary system. And so it's gonna appear dark in these uh, images. All right, um, additionally to that, let's say we have, um, you know, grain one up here, another grain, you know, this is grain two, three, four, you know, and, and we can go on and so on. Um, the way we take this cross section, a certain face, crystal, crystallographic face will be shown here, right? So this, this plane of the cross section refers to a specific crystallographic plane in the material. And so chances are, if these are randomly oriented grains, the orientation of these uh, planes is going to be different than the ones over here, right? And so those different crystallographic planes can also etch at different rates, and therefore we can also get additional uh, contrast in the coloration of different grains next to each other. So you can sometimes see this um, in microstructures. All right. So again, like I said, for uh, most metals, um, etchants are acids. So some type of uh, acid typically dissolved and diluted in water. So acids oxidize the surface. And those metal ions uh, 
enter the solution. So they enter the solution and they can also produce um, gas such as hydrogen. So that's a very common reaction. Right. So again, that's most most metals that we're talking about. Um, however, if we're talking about noble metals, those also tend to require, in addition, an oxidizer. This will produce atomic oxygen. So this could be something like HNO3, uh, nitric acid. It could be peroxides, uh, etc. So there's a number of these um, oxidizers that we have. All right. So one thing you'll see as you, as you get more into this, uh, if this is something that you do, uh, that etchants uh, commonly used tend to have specific names. Uh, Nitol, for example, Keller's reagent, um, there's a number of them. Uh, table 1.1 in our book um, has a, a, a lot of these uh, etchants. So you can take a look there. Uh, and again, uh, I mentioned early on in the metallography section is that uh, procedures for producing uh, images of these different materials has sort of been characterized and, and specific routines have de been developed. And so you can also look in those same books that give you grinding, polishing steps, how to section and so forth. You can look in those same books and get list of etchants that work for specific materials. And also, um, even within materials, there tends to be different etchants for what you want to see. Um, I showed back up, you know, again, we just talked about the, the grain boundaries. Uh, there are some grain uh, etchants that expose grain boundaries. There are some that are better for other um, applications. For example, if you have secondary phases, then you might need a different etchant to be able to uh, to see that. All right. Uh, one last thing to, to mention here in etching is that typically uh, this is uh, performed by immersion. So basically we uh, put our uh, mounted specimen into um, the etchant. Uh, we can also swab. We can put the etchant on a swab and uh, wipe that across the surface uh, of the sample. So there's multiple ways uh, to do this. There's also uh, various electrolytic um, type of etching. Uh, so there's a number of different ways, uh, but that's the general sort of overview of etching.